Hello again, this time I'm surfing the world's tiniest wave. You'll see the hole in Chris's bottom, a secret place, and my booty. So we're starting just inside Pool Harbour. The plan's to head out through the gap, out through the entrance, and we'll be heading south past Old Harry Rocks. Lunch at Swanage, possibly Durlston. However, while I'm getting into my boat, you can see in the background there, Captain Chris is getting out. So I paddled across, we work out what's going on, and somehow during the launch, he'd managed to break the self-bailer on his boat. The issue is, we're launching from Pool Harbour mouth. We're heading south to around Durlston Head-ish. The wind is coming from the north, about 17 knots-ish and as we come back with tide and the wind against each other over the overfalls he's going to need a baler because he's not got a proper boat with a lid on it so easy decision we'll stay inside pool harbour which also means we're going to be working against the tide and not going so far so we're heading off into the harbour towards brown sea island and um, with the wind coming from the north we were staying on the south side of that which gave us a little bit of shelter we can actually enjoy the sun here with the lee side of the island so it's still early in the season here, but there's a guy out there playing with his little sit-on-top kayak as we paddle around. There's apparently 36 square kilometres of water inside Pool Harbour. And the views are gorgeous. Looking out there towards the south with the headlands, some of the posh houses there on Brown Sea Island, there's a bit of history. There's also a campsite up there, which is part of National Trust land. Now past the island we're back into the exposed water and we're looking at the town. We stayed fairly well west of the main town, we didn't really want to get involved with the cross channel ferry or anything else. So as we come back to the shore these are the houses along Branksy Avenue so it's always nice for us mortals to see how you can have a jetty and a big lifting motorboat dock affair on the back of your garden. Ahead and to the south this is the end of the river Froome and it's also juvenile factoid, the end of the river Piddle. We clearly found some more kayakers out in another little sit-on. And we're soon passing the end of the marina, Lake Marina or whatever it's called. And you can see the last of the outgoing tide still working against us here, so we're in a bit of an eddy, and then get hit to the side. And as you come round, you've got this little MOD site. I'm sure plenty of us know who's going on in there. We can't see much other than a few fancy ribs. We were going to pop in for a cup of tea, but apparently they don't always appreciate that. We'll slide on by there, have another quick nose in the other door. Nothing interesting to see. Souped up forklift for launching your boat, and that's about it. This largely brings us up to Lake Pier, where we stop for a sandwich and a gossip, and I'm going to show you my booty. These are the Lomo Triton booties. There's a zip on the side, which means they're tight enough to not disappear in the mud while still being loose enough to put over your dry suit. Importantly, they're also flexible enough to use your Valkyrie rudder. So that's enough about my booty. We're leaving the beach now. Catch up with Duncan as he pops his rudder down. Only to find he's actually got a chart with him, which is pretty organized. We soon decided it's a bit boring along the North Channel, so we're going to head to the south again, though the tide is now low. So watching out for that green blob as you go in, we're looking for this channel along the south just to avoid a gooey mud fest. The conditions are pretty nice now with the wind behind us. You soon see though, it's actually hard to work out where you are against the islands because they all blend into one big blob against the background. The brown sea, furzy, green islands, and we're heading just to the right of Green Island. All a lot clearer as you get closer, you can now see the gap between Fursey and Green. However, that first green blob we saw on the chart, this is it. It's about six inches deep here. Fortunately, we made it over. We didn't have to go into a mud fest. And we're soon back in the channel. So we stayed in the channel this time. Didn't really want to walk in the mud. Back in the lee of Green Island now, so really calm, beautiful evening. And visible here, the tide is now against us, so it's now coming back in. So through the channel, we're now back into the open, working our way back to where we started. And I see, whoa, there's a ferry, it's got to be awake. You've got to try and surf it. So I work my way around Duncan's boat. I 
and sort of caught the weight, but let's just say it was a little underwhelming. But it's better than nothing, it's as good as it gets inside the harbour. Now back to the start. It's a good spot there. It's free for parking. And it's a beautiful beach for launching virtually any time. So that was an impromptu plan B whiz around Pool Harbour. About 16 k's all up. And Pool Harbour's a pretty good spot actually. If the weather's really rubbish, it's going to be still quite usable conditions inside there. As always, there's loads more to come. We'll be up in Scotland in a few weeks and paddling around the Isle of Arran. I also acquired some kit for wing foiling, so if you want some utter humiliation, you can see me have a go on that.